In our last episode, we covered the best practices for deploying and using cloud operations in an enterprise environment. But we still left some questions unanswered. How should you monitor your services? How should you deal with alerts? And what about managing cost? Today, we'll look at the best practices that you can use to get the most value out of cloud monitoring. Welcome to Engineering for Reliability with Google Cloud. Just like last time, let's first figure out why monitoring is important at all. What are we trying to achieve when we use cloud monitoring? We're after three main objectives in parallel. Our first objective is to keep our users happy. That means we need to know whether our services is meeting their needs. And the best way to do that is through well-defined SLOs and error budgets and alerts that let us know when our service is burning error budget. Our second objective is to be able to quickly and effectively respond when those alerts do fire. This means having enough data about the state of our service to be able to triage incidents, identify effective mitigations, and accurately confirm the effectiveness of those mitigations. Our final goal is to do the first two while managing the associated costs. Now that we've covered the whys, let's turn to the hows. We'll start by talking about what to monitor. From there, we'll get into how to best manage alerts. And finally, we'll cover cost management for cloud monitoring. Let's get into it. Let's start by talking about the obvious first question. What should you be monitoring? For the answer, we can turn to chapter six of the Site Reliability Engineering book on monitoring distributed systems. Fundamentally, the objective of monitoring is to answer two questions. The first one is all about symptoms. What are our users experiencing? And is that experience in any way less than ideal? The second question is all about causes. What's causing the symptoms we've identified? That cause may be direct or intermediate, but it's how we start to determine how to restore user experience back to the desired state if it's degraded in some way. We answer the first question by clearly defining our service, identifying good service level indicators or SLIs that tell us as accurately as possible how well our service is able to meet our users' expectations, and defining good service level objectives or SLOs that set a target that our SLIs have to meet. We've covered defining services, SLIs, and SLOs in cloud monitoring extensively in the series, but it's always worth revisiting these topics. The first answer to the question of what should we monitor is how well is your service meeting the needs of your users as expressed by good SLOs? The next thing to make sure your monitoring covers is what the SRE book refers to as the golden signals. Traffic is essentially a measure of how much user activity the service is responding to, usually as a count of incoming requests for user-facing services or data elements for data pipelines. Error rate is a measure of what percentage of the time the user activity is not successful, which of course depends on the service and user expectations. Latency is a measure of how long the service takes to service a request. And finally, saturation is a measure of how much of the available capacity the service is using at a given time. A great way to ensure that you have easy access to these signals is to create a dashboard like this. It shows the four golden signals for a given service at once. It makes it easy to correlate, for example, increases in inbound traffic to latency degradations or increased capacity requirements. You can automate the creation of dashboards like this for your services. We'll link to some examples in the episode notes. Finally, you may need to augment your monitoring with custom telemetry to capture service-specific information. We covered doing this in a previous episode. Review that for an introduction to instrumenting your services with Open Census and Prometheus. So that takes care of the first question, what you should be monitoring. We've just covered SLOs, golden signals, and custom telemetry, which brings us to alerting. How should you configure alerts? What should you alert on? And how should you respond to alerts? Let's take a look. Let's again return to the monitoring chapter of the SRE book. These four criteria should be applied to alerts that go to pagers. Every time the pager goes off, we should be able to react with a sense of urgency. But we can only react with a sense of urgency a few times a day before we become fatigued. Every page should be actionable. Every page response should require intelligence. If a page merits only a robotic response, it shouldn't be a page. And ideally, pages alert us about a novel problem or an event that hasn't been seen before. That means we need to take action to prevent pages from reoccurring once we've mitigated the triggering condition and hopefully identified the root cause. Alerts that don't meet these criteria should not be pages. Alerts that aren't actionable are of no use at all. 
Alerts that require human intervention but that aren't urgent should be filed as tickets instead. Cloud monitoring supports multiple notification channels, and this allows you to set up alert delivery that meets your needs. For example, you could use email or pager duty delivery to trigger pagers and configure a webhook or PubSub integration to file tickets for non-urgent alerts. You can also automate the management of your alerts by using an automation tool like Terraform. This helps to ensure consistency and avoids human errors in alert configuration. Finally, it's important to understand the tools you have available to capture and optimize your monitoring costs. Let's have a look at those now. First, it's important to understand how you incur monitoring costs. Platform metrics emitted by Google Cloud Services are always free. You are charged for other metrics, such as custom metrics or those written by Istio, based on storage volume. Refer to the pricing page for the latest version of this information. The monitoring settings page shows you exactly how much data you are ingesting for each project in your metric scope. You can measure your usage by using billing reports and filtering them to just the monitoring service to see exactly how much monitoring charges you're incurring in your project. You can even figure out exactly how much data is being ingested by each custom metric by creating a chart and using the metric bytes ingested metric. These tools do a great job of helping you understand the sources of monitoring costs. But what can you do to optimize those? Let's have a look. The way that you use labels for cloud components might impact the volume of time series that are generated for your metrics and monitoring. For example, you can use labels to appropriately report metrics to cost centers on your bill and to signify whether specific environments are production or development. Adding these labels means that additional time series are generated in monitoring. You can calculate the total number of time series by multiplying the cardinality of all labels. For example, if there are 11 cost center values and five environment values, that means 55 time series are generated. This is why the way that you add labels might add significant metric volume and therefore increase the cost. We recommend carefully limiting the number of labels and avoiding label values with high cardinality. Metrics sent from the Cloud Ops agent are another source of monitoring costs. The agent collects app and system metrics from common third-party apps and additional VM-level metrics. If you don't need them for certain VMs, you can reduce the volume by not sending these metrics. You can also reduce the metric volumes by reducing the number of VMs that use the agent. Custom metrics are chargeable metrics created by using the monitoring API or integrations like Open Census to monitor any metric that a user instruments. The more services that you instrument to send metrics, the more custom monitoring metrics are generated. If you want to reduce metric volumes, you can reduce the number of custom monitoring metrics that your services send. Thanks for joining me today. We covered best practices for setting up and using cloud monitoring, including what to monitor, how to manage alerts, and how to optimize your monitoring costs. I hope these recommendations help you keep your users happy. In our next episode, we'll tackle best practices for using cloud logging. Thanks so much for watching today. Don't forget to like and subscribe to never miss out on more engineering for reliability with Google Cloud. See you soon.